So tell us a little bit about what you do today. I'm a chef. And uh, that, those years of being so sick and then uh, being told to go gluten-free, and I felt so amazing that I thought, okay, well, this is my new life. But I have no idea how to cook any of that. Like, what do I do? And so I decided to go to culinary school. And it took a while to decide that it was okay to leave a high-powered, a high-paying job and go do that. And so it was in culinary school that I realized how much I loved cooking for people. I loved cooking for myself and figuring stuff out, but I loved the idea of cooking for other people and showing them that food could still be really delicious. And so I work as a professional chef and I cook for families and I only cook for food allergies or dietary restrictions. So if you had to choose your absolute last meal, what would it be? <sighs> it wouldn't be made by me. It would be made by someone else. And there's a particular chef that really is so I don't know of a particular food. Mm. The question was, what would my last meal be? Oh, it would be pizza. <laughs> like, like if, <laughs> if I'm dying tomorrow, I'm eating a boatload of pizza because I won't care how I feel after. That's the one thing in gluten-free that's it's hard to replace. Um, however, I heard this week, stay tuned, because we may be on to something on a new pizza crust recipe. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, so just to switch gears a little bit, I know um, being with your mother was very impactful. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for anybody in the room that's, that's lost a parent, it's, it's, it's devastating. But looking back, at the last few months that you got to spend with her, mm -hmm. what was like the biggest lesson that you got out of it? Nothing else in the world mattered but being with her. I was so incredibly lucky that I had some things happen that completely took away all of my commitments and I was suddenly just available to be with her. And she even said to me, I went to pick her up to take to a doctor's visit, and she said, oh good, now you can just take care of me. So my mom was a lot smarter than me. And so it was just her and I, and I got to be her nurse. And I will not lie and say like, oh, that was easy, I knew what to do. You know, I was young, I was 26 years old. Uh, but man, it was just her and I, and that, and nothing else in the world was more important than the time that I spent with her. Because it's life and death. There is nothing else more important than that. And I got to nurse her. I got to be her nurse right until the very end. Mm. I am so thankful for that time. So you were never, what was the first time you, you had a, 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 like a visceral reaction to food in terms of a flavor or something that was just so impactful that you, I mean, you're devoting your entire life mm -hmm. to, to cooking today? Yeah. Is there a memory that comes up? Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, in the summers, I had a really, really incredible babysitter named Alice. And she was an old Dutch woman. And in her backyard, she had apple trees and apricot trees. And we would play in the summer. We even all built a swimming pool in her backyard because we were free, cheap labor in the summers. We built this swimming pool in her backyard and we put it right underneath the apricot tree. 
And we would just reach up and just take those apricots and like just, I can't remember anything tasting quite like that, that fresh apricot. Like even today, I'm still kind of always chasing that flavor in the grocery store. Like, oh, maybe this is the one. But I'm sure that wasn't all about the apricots. The other thing she would do is with the apple trees, she would cook them and make applesauce. And I think this is where my love of making food and then the joy of having someone else taste it and eat it and just be like, I'm so delighted when I see them light up, is we would all take turns churning that applesauce. And it was hard work. And as kids, you're like, can we just eat it now? Like, let's just, and we would churn it and it's hot and it's steaming and no, it's not ready yet. And we would churn it and churn it and we'd all take turns. And at the end, we'd all get some in a little cup. And God, the, just the flavor. I mean, it was her love was in there, absolutely. Uh, but man, just that freshness, that fresh was incredible. Mm. So yeah, those two things Beautiful. are my first. Yeah. My mouth is watering. <laughs> <laughs> Applesauce for everyone. <laughs> um, so the, the three words, the three words mm. to your meaning of life, what would they be? Lead with love. Everything I do when I'm cooking for people, it's about love. It's about loving them, about helping them have the energy to love their family. I mean, everything, I don't get hired just to make some food that's in the fridge that might go to waste. The people that I'm cooking for need me. They have a dietary restriction, an illness. It wouldn't be a surprise that I absolutely love cooking for people with cancer. And so I'm trying to give them something healthy and delicious and satisfying. And it's all love in there. You know, it's either it's I'm giving them love or I'm helping them have the energy to love others. So there's love in everything I do.